so I can continue on. Ah, so this is what section are we in? Chapter three, section three, double and half. Sounds like somebody I should know. To get double and half angles, we're going to use this formula. This is one of the formulas that we derived on um, Friday. The one we actually derived was alpha minus beta, and then the sign in between on the right hand side becomes plus. Um, there's a pretty picture and everything, so when you watch the video, you can see all the cool stuff. Um, but this is the sum of two angles. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to take two angles that you already know, like alpha and beta, that could be like pi over 4 and pi over 3, and you could add them together and come up with another cosine ratio um, that you can get spit out, which is much more complex than one half squared three over two and uh, stuff like that. What I want to do to this formula today is manipulate it a little bit so that what would happen if I let uh, beta equal alpha? In other words, what if the two angles that we're talking about here, alpha and beta, were exactly the same? Well, then that would become cosine of alpha plus alpha is equal to cosine of alpha, cosine of alpha, uh, minus sine of alpha, sine of alpha. How are you guys at drawing Greek letters so far? I just love them. I still don't understand why they make letters. Greek? That's where we had our letters from. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Most of the Greek letters translate perfectly into regular old R letters. I, got it. I forget what R's are called. There's a name for them. Yeah. It's English? No. <laughs> English is a language built on it, yeah, but the symbols themselves are not English. Hmm. All right, so what's alpha plus alpha? I'm still writing the top. Alpha squared. Two so alpha. x plus x is x squared. <laughs> two alpha. Two alpha. So this is cosine of a double angle, two times an angle, is equal to. What's cosine alpha times cosine alpha? Cosine squares alpha. Cosine. I love how you say that. Squares. <laughs> cosine squares square of alpha. So the way we write that is cosine square alpha, but it really represents cosine alpha all squared. All right, sine alpha times sine alpha, of course, is? Sine squared alpha. Sine squared alpha. <coughs> and we get this nice little identity. <laughs> are there any more, uh, are there going to be any more Greek letters that we're learning with? Alpha, beta, I don't use gamma that often, theta. Theta. And sometimes phi. Phi is good for phase angle. Uh, what about omega? Okay, so cosine of 2 alpha, this thing's not being very sensitive today, is equal to that. Um, from this, we can do some other little identities, like um, we know that cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta, the Pythagorean identity. So I can do a little substitution. So if I do a little substitution with this into uh, this, it becomes cosine of 2 alpha is equal to, if I replace cosine squared alpha with 1 minus sine squared, I'm going to get 1 minus sine squared alpha in place of the uh, cosine squared over here. And then there's that other minus sine squared on the end of it. Does that simplify? Yeah. Yeah. So another identity for cosine of a double angle would be cosine 
of a double angle is equal to 1 minus two sides squared. I was just waiting for him to say uh, so that's silly. Yeah. Uh, two sine squares of alpha. If guessing was never my strong suit. Guessing? Mm. No, guessing's well good. Guessing's bad sometimes. All right. All right, so we have two identities for this one so far. But I can come up with another one. What if I used sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine squared theta? It's not the same thing, but just the opposite ones. Well, I'm just going to substitute it into the other piece. So if I do that, bring it over here, I'm going to get cosine of 2 alpha is equal to, now I'm substituting this one out, the <coughs> square. So the first term doesn't change, cosine squared alpha, minus, and sine squared is getting replaced, but because of that minus, you have to put parentheses. And in place of that, I'm going to put 1 minus cosine squared. So why do you have to put parentheses? Anytime you have minus, you always want to put parentheses because it distributes over the terms. A lot of people forget that they think it's just minus the first term, but it's minus anything that comes after it. So if I write that one down, it becomes cosine of 2 alpha is equal to what? Negative Just negative one? It's going to end up being negative one. That's it? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Okay, now distribute the negative. Oh, shoot. Two cosine. Two cosine squared alpha minus one. You know, when you distribute it, that's why I put these parentheses here. This becomes a oh, positive. So, this one has three associative identities to it. Now, technically, the top one isn't very useful at all because you're changing cosine into a cosine and a sine. It's better to use the green one or the red one here, um, where cosine is either in terms of sine or cosine is in terms of cosine itself. And notice that on the left-hand side, you have twice the angle. On the right-hand side, you only have the angle itself. So that gives us some identities, and these are going to get used in a little bit, but I want to show you the <coughs> other one. That's not as used as much as the ones I just went over. So the <coughs> other one has to do with this identity. The sine of alpha plus beta is equal to. Remember, these are the ones you have to memorize. The, the cosine of the difference in sum and the sine of the sum, uh, sum of difference. So what's cosine, or I'm sorry, sine of alpha plus beta equal to? Sine of alpha plus sine of alpha? Plus sine beta? No, you don't distribute. Oh. Remember, it gets a little bit longer. Sine of beta? Oh, sine no. alpha, sine beta. Nope. It's cosine. Cosine of beta. What goes in between? Minus? No, plus, it's plus. It's, it's plus. plus, sine doesn't change. And then sine of beta cosine, cosine alpha. of alpha. So this is the sine of the sum formula, identity. And just like before, we're going to let the second angle be exactly the same as the first angle. Let beta equal alpha. Now this one isn't as um, interesting as the first one I showed you that had three different identities. This is just going to give you one. Um, but if we do this, we get sine of alpha plus alpha is equal to sine of alpha cosine of alpha plus sine of alpha cosine of alpha. So sine of alpha plus alpha is sine of alpha cosine of alpha plus sine of alpha cosine of alpha. Now, if I simplify, alpha plus alpha is? Alpha squared. Don't you dare. Two alpha. Two alpha. And sine of alpha cosine alpha plus itself. Oh, sorry, what? 
Sine sin squared, squared plus, plus itself. itself. Oh, it's two times what it was. Two times what it was. Yeah. And this is the only identity for cosine of, or I'm sorry, sine of a double angle. Sine of a double angle. That's it. That's it. Not bad. So where cosine has three different ones and you really want to focus on the ones that only give you in terms of cosine or in terms of sine. This one only gives you one identity and it happens to be in terms of sine and cosine. Um, but this identity actually has a lot of physical attributes. In other words, there are applications that depend on that identity being able to go from cosine times sine and back it off into a single um, sine function. Remember, these things can go in either direction. You can either break it apart or you can put it back together, one of the two. All right, so what are we going to do with these things? We're going to do something, right? We're going to do identities. I'll just call it an ID for short. Let's see. One plus uh, sine of two t is equal to sine of t plus cosine of t all squared. Can you just put x instead of t? You could. Yeah, anytime you don't like the variable that a book gives you, you can always change it to another variable. But you have to remember you actually changed it. Will I take off on a test if you do that? Probably not. Yeah, so as long as at the top you say t equals x. Oh, okay, so as long as we just let you know that we're changing it, you're fine. That'd be fine for me. 2x, y. Oh, I mean foil it. Foil it, thank you. I like that better. So if anything, get rid of the 2 and rewrite it as itself times itself. All right, what's it foil up to? I don't know. Sine t squared. Sine, be careful how you say it. Sine squared of t. Sine squared of t. Plus, plus 2, <laughs> sine t, st. Wait, what? St? What, st? Okay. You know what I mean, cos to cos. Oh, dear lord. Cosine. Well, cos <laughs> you cos know what I mean. I don't want my name. It's like st. <laughs> it's just cos. cos. Cost. All right, plus, plus cost. Cosine. Cosine. Squared. Square T. All right. Cost with a two in the center. I wonder about cotangent. T, T? <laughs> All right, what can I do now? The substitute. Substitute what? <laughs> the cosine squared T. Easier. The sine. Oh. That, that sine plus the cosine equals? It's equal to 1. Sine squared Jesus plus. Things, but he can't do your math. <coughs> cosine squared equals Ooh. 1. So you get 1, one plus squared. 2 sine t cosine t. Alright. Now remember, these identities go in either direction. I can substitute sine of 2 alpha equal to this mess, but if I have this mess, oh, I can back it off oh, to sine of... That 2 sine cosine equals sine of the 2, the two theta thingy. What? What? Yeah, that 2 sine t cosine t sine is the, the same thing the as sine of 2... So that variable. is that up there. Yes. Okay. So you get 1 plus sine of 2t, two two t's, which gives you that up there. It's just that identities, you have to be able to read them left to right and up right to left. All right. They go backwards. One of the more common ones to see is you see a product like sine alpha, cosine alpha, and it doesn't have the two. But you see the sine alpha, cosine alpha, and you really want to put in I don't know. a two. You can. But if I put a two in front of it, what else do I have to do to this expression? If I introduce a 2, I have changed the expression. So how do I balance the expression off? Yeah, two on the other side. There is no other side. Oh. Wait, what? If I throw this 2 in here to force it to look like the identity, 
Okay? Mm. I've changed the expression. So how do I balance it so it's really only equal to sine alpha cosine alpha? Uh, you divide by two. You divide by two. Hey. Really? Yeah. And then the top becomes sine of two alpha, and then the bottom just stays divide by two. So this is equal to one half sine of two alpha. Those are the types of manipulations that that formula allows. You can put it in, but if you put it in, you've got to balance it off. Same thing happens if you take an expression like x, and you say, oh, I'm going to add 5 to it for no good reason. But if you add 5 to it, you change it. So how do you get rid of it? You subtract it. Subtract it. This type of math, this balancing type, comes in very handy later on in calculus when you get there, if you get there, mm -hmm. if you can survive. Um, where you add and subtract, or you multiply and you divide, because you don't have an equation, all you have is an expression. Alright. What island? Survivor? The Survivor Island of Algebra uh, Calculus. Calculus? <laughs> Over the summer. Oh, that's yeah, how, how long is the how long is calculus with the summer? Ten like, weeks. Ten weeks? Ten weeks. So our whole summer. Yeah, and it's like two hours a day. Well, how about this one then? I don't know, I've got all my limbs. <laughs> ah, sine squared y is equal to 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 2y. Fix it. Why is that? It's just to verify it and manipulate one side to look like the other side. What side do you want to work with? What side do you want to work with? The what? Right. right? No, work the left. What are you going to do to the left to make it look more like the right? Uh, Divide by half first. Good lord. You can't move things around. Uh, okay. That is one guess that you... You cannot take. solve these because the answer is all yeah. real numbers. So, what can you do to the right-hand side to make it look more like the left-hand side? Multiply by two. Multiply by two. I don't know. Think of it this way. This has a sine, this has a cosine. Well, this side has a single y, this side has a two y's. double y. You can't have a double y and a single y and compare them. You have to kind of either take the single y and make it double, which is very hard, or take the double y and make it single. single. Is that so is there any identity that will get rid of the double y and change the cosine into a sine? Well, isn't one minus cosine? One minus sine is equal to cosine. Cosine. No, 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 no. It's cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. They have to be squared. So, is there an identity uh -huh. for cosine of two y? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many of them? Dude, we just we just wrote two. down like three of them. Right? Yeah, we wrote down three of them. Can we use the one that says one minus the two sine squared? You want to because this side has okay. sine. sine. So we're gonna do one half, one minus. And any time you're substituting after a minus sign, I highly suggest the first symbol you put is a parenthesis. Okay. And it's 1 minus 2 sine squared y. Mm -hmm. All right. Then what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Distribute. Distribute what? You got the negative. The negative. All right. So 1 half. 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared y. Inside parentheses first. What happens with 1 minus 1? I like the sound effect. Poof. <laughs> Poof is for inverse functions. Um, they just cancel. 1 half of 2 is? The left one. side. The left side. It gives you sine squared y. So that cosine of double angle, you want to be careful which one you choose. There's the cosine sine squared, there's the 1 minus sine squared, and there's the cosine squared minus 1. Um, so you just have to choose wisely. I don't like these. You don't like these? No. Uh, I feel like they're going to come back and bite me in the ass. Well, they're going to get worse. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that they're going to bite you. Um, like the end of last class, for example, what if I say uh, sine of theta is equal to 3 fifths? And I want to find sine of 2 theta. Mm. 
Who's Noah? Oh, uh, no. Nah. Wait, are we graphing this? Graphing. Do we graph it? No. No. I just, I saw the little bright side and I was like, wait, are we graphing? Well, kind of in a way. Well, let's not. Not graphing. Let's say drawing a picture. Can we just, can we just not say we did? So find sine of 2 theta? Yeah, I want to find sine of 2 theta. If sine of 2 theta is equal to 3 theta. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> if you multiply it by two, it would be two sine theta equals six over five. But it's not sine of two theta it's inside the sine function. So it's another way. I'm sure you're gonna tell us. Nope. Not gonna tell you. Well then we don't have We talked about this last class. I wasn't here for that. Yes, you were. You, you just said near the end of class. Uh, I was not here for that. So, I give you sine of theta is equal to 3 fifths. What's this pi over 2 less than theta less than pi mean? Where are we? You're between those two things. You're in between. Oh, no, you know, sir. Where am I? We're in between two, pi over 2 and pi. Two. Where am I? <laughs> between there. Definitely. Yeah, but where is that? The first sine quadrant. It is definitely not in the first quadrant. Six. 3 pi over second 4. Quadrant. Uh, second quadrant. Why is it the second quadrant? Because pi over 2 is straight up in the air and pi is over there, pointing over there. to the left. So this is second quadrant, and sine of theta is three fifths in Q two. So what do I do? Well, I don't know how many more hints I can give you. Draw a picture. Draw a picture. Okay. So, so you draw serious? what? You draw a unit, a triangle, unit circle, a coordinate plane. <laughs> ah, coordinate plane. We'll go with the guess number three. <laughs> and then you draw your cuts, it's three-fifths, so no, you No, I don't care about that. That's not an angle. Three-fifths is a ratio. Why not? Ratio, it's outside of the sign. I have an angle. Where is it? In the second one. So you so, draw an angle. So I draw an angle in the second quarter. You make a triangle. Make a triangle. Was that not my three guesses all in one? <laughs> oh, was, um, <laughs> you said I it in the right order. Like, draw I would have been draw triangle. Triangle. Quarter plane. But you said quarter plane. <laughs> that's like that's opposite like is it's backwards. I know. Opposite three. is three. Hypotenuse is five. Third side is seven. How do you know that? Four. Opposite over hypotenuse. Negative four. Oh, okay. Ooh. This would be negative four after Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. It's also a special triangle, three, four, five. Okay. Great. And this is your theta reference angle. Obviously, this is theta. 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 So how do I find sine of 2 theta? Well, what's sine of 2 theta equal to? Not as a number, but what's it equal to? <coughs> as an identity. It's equal to fifth. No, it's not. I gave it to you. It's in your notes. Wait. Wait. I'm trying to get you to these identities. You want to do sine theta or cosine theta? 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So therefore, sine of 2 theta is going to equal as a ratio. Wait. Okay. 2 times. 2 times 3 fifths. 3 fifths. Times. Negative four fifths. Negative four fifths. Adjacent over hypotenuse or cosine. And then simplify two times three times negative four. Um, ne negative twenty-four. Five times five in the bottom. So sine of this double angle is equal to negative twenty-four twenty-fifths. And notice it's still less than a negative. I mean, it's still within the bounds of negative one to positive one. It's it's range. If you ever get 25 over 24, you did Wait, something. So, so, so you say it's between negative 1 and positive 1? Yeah. I thought it was the sine of anything has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. I thought it was positive no, 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 2 no. and positive That's 1. the angle. The answer has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Remember the sine graph? If you're going to graph it, it would go up and down, and the maximum it can go is 1, and the minimum it can go is. So if your answer is outside of those bounds, it's wrong. you did this wrong. I've had people come up with answers of 76 over 25. But it doesn't make any sense because it's larger than 1. Yep. 
Why is he looking at me like I'm insane? I was like, how'd you, how'd you even get like 76? I'm just making it up. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm saying. How would they get that from those numbers? The, the key word there is if you got that. You know you did it wrong. All right. Yeah. Second part of this problem. Yeah. Find yeah. cosine yeah. of the double yeah. angle. Yay. Now this one, remember, gives you three choices. But I highly suggest you don't use the first one. Because then you have to use cosine and sine. Can mm -hmm. I change theta to x? Because I just wrote down 20. Doesn't matter. Fail. You can just put a line through the zero and it makes it theta. Exactly. Has to be so I, I just, I like, I, you I have to be so difficult. difficult. I prefer x. You're just difficult. So it's your choice which one you use. But I highly suggest you use one that you don't pre-calculate. It has a one with cosine sine, it has one with cosine, and it has one with sine. Which one should you use? You should use the, uh, the one with sine. The one with sine, because that's a solid bit of information. Isn't there so, one with sine? So, what I'm interested to say is, if you screwed your picture up, <laughs> if, you screwed, if you screwed your picture up, and that negative four is wrong, it's better to use the sine, because all you have to do is backtrack to the beginning of the problem. So if you use the sine one, this is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And when you do the sine squared, make sure you do parentheses and then square on the outside. What goes on the inside? Three-fifths. Three-fifths. And that way it's harder to make a mistake. So, so you try so to use what's given. three-fifths from the beginning. Yeah. Right? And that's why I would do it, because it's not my work. It was given to me. Um, three fifths squared. Nine twenty fifths times two. Eighteen over fifty. When you multiply two times a fraction, do you multiply the top by two and the bottom by two? I don't know. That's why I guess. Multiply the top by two. Two times three fifths. <laughs> What's two times three fifths? Nine fifths. Six fifths. Oh, six fifths. <laughs> <laughs> I got squares in my head. I see that. Remember with fractions, multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Oh, 20 fifths. <laughs> What's 1 minus 18 20 fifths? Without a calculator. 1725. 7. This is math history. <laughs> when you see 1 minus a fraction, you take the two know. numbers and just subtract them. 25 minus 18 is 7. <coughs> Again, that number is between positive 1 and negative 1, so I feel good about it. Okay. That's not bad. Again, <laughs> sine and cosine have to be bounded by 1 and negative 1. So it's 7 25ths and not 17 20 well, 7. It's 7 because 18 plus 7 7 plus 18 25. Plus 25. And it gives you the 1. If you make this 25 over 25, you get 25 minus 18. Got it. Okay. Yeah, John. Fractions, I swear. Right. <laughs> Just fractions. Fractions are the enemy. Oh. Fractions are fractions of the fraction of fraction of fractions. That's a complex fraction. <laughs> it's a quadruple negative. Ain't not, never know. I ain't, ain't, don't do it. Not, never you hear, still you, you hear that class on the computer? Don't take this class. Da, 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 da. You will die. Probably one of the harder things to do. Oh. What dying? That's actually easy. Manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't figured anything out, it is harder to make something than it is to destroy something. Uh, power reduction. In that magical land called calculus, dealing with cosines with powers and sines with powers is very, very difficult. It's a magical land, all right. This magical land of calculus. Um, so the trick to use is this thing called power reduction. And nobody likes it. I've heard it. You guys, the calculus people, nobody likes it. I'm going to love it. Um, it causes a lot of errors because there's fractions in there and people are bad with fractions, but generally the idea behind it isn't too bad. So, if I'm going to reduce a power on something that looks like sine to the fourth x, my goal, I'll write that off to the side, goal, goal um, highest, 
power of one. I don't want a square, I don't want a cube, I don't want a force. I want plain old sine x, plain old cosine x, or cosine sine. I'm not sure about the x yet. All right, so the trick starts off this way. You see sine to the fourth, you break it up into sine squared x times sine squared x. Get it down to a power of two at least. If it was sine to the cube, you'd write it as sine squared times sine. And that way, at least one of the things is down to a power of one. That's your goal. Writing it as sine times sine times sine times sine is not going to do us any good. But they're all about one. Yeah, but it's still sine to the fourth power. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but they're still all to the power of one. Yeah. So, so when I expand this, out. I want just a sine to a power of one, a cosine to a power of one, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And they can only be added together. They can't be multiplied. Okay. All right. So there are identities for sine squared. We could use 1 minus cosine squared, but does that bring the power down? No. 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 Squared. So the identity we want to use, sadly, are these two relationships. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus ooh, 2 sine squared theta. And the other one, of course, is cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 cosine squared theta. Wait. Those are the um, identities for cosine of 2 theta. It's beginning of class. No, no, no. Did I screw up? Yep. Oh, I did, I did, I did. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got the, these two backwards, sorry. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. I'll play no. with it. I never said I don't make mistakes. No. <laughs> so they have a sine squared over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this formula, this first one here, and I'm going to solve for sine squared. So how do I start solving for sine squared? Use. You can subtract one, so you get. So now we also. So now we can mess I'm not, with both sides. I'm not verifying an identity. So we can now mess with both sides. Mm -hmm. I'm using an identity. Then, just like sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, uh -huh. I allowed you, after we had the identity, to start moving pieces around. Okay. It allows for more substitutions. So subtract 1 from both sides. Give you negative 2 sine squared. Then what? Divide by negative 2. When you do that, you're going to get sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta Wait, is it one over minus? 2. Oh, that's right. Okay. If you divide by a negative, one thing you can do is flip over subtraction. A neat little trick. So this is what's considered a power reduction formula. Identity. All right. Take a guess what the other one is. Cosine squared theta is going to equal. If you solve for cosine squared theta, oh. what would you do first? You add one. Add one, and then so this one actually becomes one plus cosine of two theta all over two. So if you need to power reduce sine, you use the one minus formula. If you have to power reduce cosine, you use the one plus formula. Power reduction formula. Yeah, but now here comes the fun. I have two sine squares, so I need to write 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 twice. So the first one becomes 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. Ah, not 2 theta. In this case, 2 x. x all over 2. And then the other one is also 1 minus cosine of 2x all over 2. I like putting parentheses here. It reminds me that the two x is inside of the function. All right, what would be your first step to start simplifying this ugly expression? You could, right off the bat, but something's in the way. The denominators? The denominators. What can I do with the denominators? Multiply by that, I don't know. Yeah, multiply. What's two times two? What can I do with the four? 
Now remember, it's all this mess over 4. What's another way of writing something over 4? Uh, they go over here. If I have 2x minus 1 all divided by 5, that's the same thing as 2x minus 1 times 1 fifth. One fifth. So having a 5 in the bottom is the same thing as a so 1 fifth. So you just do 1 fourth, fourth multiply by whatever's on the top after multiply. Right. So you write this as 1 fourth times 1 minus cosine 2x times itself 1 minus cosine 2x. Couldn't you just have squared it? Well, when you write it down, you but, just wrote down square instead of writing it out. Yeah, but I want to expand it anyway, so I'd rather see where all the pieces are coming from. So the twos in the bottom, you want to pull, put them together and pull it out as a quarter. That gets at least the fraction off for a little bit. It's not going to save us at the end, but at least it pulls the fraction away. Foil what's left inside, and you're going to get a quarter of, well, 1 times 1. 1. 1. 1 times cosine 2x twice, right, for uh, inner and outer. That's such a minus 2 cosine of 2x. Cosine of 2x. And then negative cosine of 2x times negative cosine of 2x is? Positive. Positive. Cosine squared 2x. Cosine squared 2x. I don't like this. Yeah, and it's just getting messy now. All right, that's a good start. It looks pretty. And if we did reduce the power a little bit, the highest power before used to be to the fourth. The highest power now is to the second. To the, to the second. But the problem is I need the highest power to be to the first. So the first two terms are perfectly fine. It's that third term that I have to deal with. So I still have to do a power reduction on that guy. Isn't, isn't, didn't we go on what that was equal to? Yep, it's over here. Cosine squared is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So that third part is that and whatever. Kind of. Be careful. I'll write down the beginning though. 1 fourth, 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus what goes in place of cosine squared of 2x? 1 plus cosine. That, that, that 1 plus cosine of over 2, I'll agree with. So we don't know what the huh? is. Uh, we do know what the of is. It's x, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 2. One. Now you got to think of it. On this side, it's a single theta. It's cosine squared of a single theta. On this side, it's 2 of the thetas. So 4. So 4. This has to be 4. Because it started off as 2x, and when you move the power reduction, you have to double your angle. So up here, it started off as a single x. When we use the power reduction, it doubled the angle. So if you have 2x, it has to increase to 4x. If you so, had 3x, it would increase to So every six. time that you go down, pretty much every time you go down in power, you double your angles. About twice as much. You double your angles. So the square goes away, but your angle gets doubled. No, it's not fun at all. Yep. All right, and the second not fun is now we have a quarter way at the front and this half buried in the very back end. So I need to distribute the quarter and I then need to separate the half. So I'm going to bring this up. What's a quarter times one? A quarter. A quarter. What's a quarter times negative two cosine of two x? Wait, say that again. One quarter. Mm -hmm. times 2 cosine 2x. Two half. half. So that would be minus a half cosine of 2x. Now I highly suggest you treat this as a separate. This is 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 4x. Uh -huh. so so we'll separate the fractions. A quarter times a half. Quarter times this first half is? An eighth. Eight. An eighth. <laughs> Why would you add them? This <laughs> is <laughs> Uh, let's get this. Uh, and then you have that quarter times the half cosine of 4x, so that would be an eighth again, cosine of 4x. There's no escaping the fractions after that point, so you're kind of stuck with them. Is there anything else I could do to that mass? Can't you simplify it? Yeah. What can I put together? With the one fourth and the eighth. What's a fourth and eighth added together? A sixth. Hmm. 
goes to find the common denominator. Which is? Eight. And therefore, this becomes two eighths plus one so eighth. Three eighths. Three eighths. So this is three eighths minus one half cosine of two x plus one eighth cosine of four x. And this used to be sine to the fourth power of x. So in that magical land of calculus, instead of dealing with sine to the fourth power of x, or sine to the fourth power of x, or sine of x raised to the fourth power, it is easier to work with 3 eighths, 1 half, cosine 2 x, 1 eighth, cosine 4 x. So it's easier to work with a big one instead of a small one? Yeah, in this case, yes. To calculate something, in, it, it would look like this. It is extremely difficult, but to calculate it based on this, very easy. Is that a fancy symbol? Ah, that's called an integral. Yeah, John, you don't know that. You don't know that. <laughs> you will know that if you get through the magical land of calculus. calculus. And through calculus. That's actually calc two. I count two. I'm seriously, I'm seriously being scared. I'm seriously rethinking my idea of three calculus classes. <laughs> Johnny will change your major. Oh, life gets easy after you get through that garbage. Because uh, that then you start dealing with vectors, and vectors are simplistic. Oh, that is pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're going to vector. What's a vector? <laughs> it's a going from black up to No. <laughs> it's a magnitude and a direction. Yeah. John, you didn't know that's a show. <laughs> you guys are so sweet to each other. You must be dating. Oh, no, that's him and the player. <sighs> Half angle formulas. If I learn one more time today. What's what's wrong with it? And this is this is only two seventeen. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Half angle formulas. <laughs> They come from Oh wait, this is we're doing half angles? Uh-huh. What you were talking about the other day. Yeah, well I guess, and you're like, I haven't talked about it. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. So it's classified. It's classified. So um Ooh, I forgot the square. So like uh, the power reduction formulas, the Method of it is pretty similar, except for one difference. You let big A equal two A. But I didn't see it. So cosine. A. So that'd be cosine Where's big A. a? Cosine big A equals one minus two sine squared A. No. Close. Well. No. Where's big A? No. I'm making up big A. Oh. Okay. I'm saying instead of talking about twice the angle, it's just called the angle. So. So if this is big A, cosine, is cosine big A, that would be sine squared big A, <laughs> without the two. Mm. Two A's is a big A. Yeah. So a single A is little A. Half A. Half, half of the big A. Because you have to move the two over. Yeah. So if you solve for little A, you get A is equal to big A over two. So this formula becomes cosine of the angle is equal to one minus two sine squared of the angles half. half of the big angle. Now I'm not interested in cosine of the whole angle, I'm interested in sine of half of the angle. So I need to turn around and solve for sine. the sine. So let me do it a little different than the way you did it earlier. You subtracted one to the other side. I find it easier if the piece you're trying to solve for is minus to flip it with the piece on the other side completely. So just take the two pieces and flip flop it. So it would be 2 sine squared of A over 2 equals. is equal to 1 minus cosine big A. Yeah. It just makes life a little bit easier to keep this positive. It's a totally legal operation. I call it the flip flop. I'm pretty sure it's called It's not very mathematical flip flop, but yeah. it probably is. All right, so how do I solve for sine? What's the next thing? Take half of it. Take half of it. So this would be sine squared of A over 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine of the big angle divided by 2. Now remember, I'm trying to solve for sine. So what's the next step? Take half of it. 
it is really take the square root. So we get this neat little formula. Sine of the half angle is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine of a all over 2. The problem is we just took square root of both sides of an equation. So you have to tag in plus or minus. Plus or minus. So depending on where this half angle is determines whether the, ang the answer is going to be positive or negative. That's when you go back to this picture. All students, students take calculus. English. So if your half angle landed in the first top two quadrants, um, then your answer is positive. If your half angle landed in the bottom two quadrants, then your answer is negative. So you just have to know where half the angle lands to determine whether it's positive or negative. The formula doesn't tell you that. It's a neat little formula, though. So that's the sine of the half angle. Guess what? There's a cosine of the half angle. Guess what's the only difference? It's a plus instead of negative. Instead of 1 minus cosine, it would be 1 plus, plus cosine. So it's exactly the same formula, except it's off by that sign. Oh, so smart. Good at guessing. We know that. So for instance, I really should just clear this and start fresh. Did that, did that. Not worried about that yet. Um, oh, yeah. Let's go back to my example that I miswrote earlier. Cosine of 15 degrees. Now the trick with the sum and the difference is to come up with two angles that we know that we can add or subtract to come up with the one we're looking for. With the half angle formula available, the angle I want to find is, is there one that I can double that I know? 30, right? So I can rewrite this as cosine of 30 degrees divided by 2. And 30 degrees divided by 2 is back to our 15 degrees, so I haven't changed anything. Didn't you write that Friday as cosine of 45 minus, minus 30. 30? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I could do it with the difference, but I also can do it with just a fraction of half. Probably do with fraction. Much easier to work with. Is it real? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> What's the formula for cosine of half an angle? Well, it's similar to the sine one. Um, 15 degrees is in what quadrant? <coughs> first. First quadrant, so is it plus or minus? It's plus. It's plus. So it's just going to be the square root of 1, instead of minus, it would be 1 plus cosine of... A, and A in this case is 30 degrees. Because over here it's A over 2. So it's the number on the top. So this would be cosine of 30 degrees over 2. All right, what's so cosine? This is, this is basically what all of math revolves around. Identities and manipulations and yeah. What was math invented? To find out how the real world works. Exactly. Without math you wouldn't have TV. Games, or computers, any electricity, nothing. Well, We'd be working with medieval tools still. Even then so bad about that. And even then, we'd probably be cavemen. What's so bad about that? I bet it was calculation. Uh, at least there wouldn't be any global warming. Cosine of 30 degrees. <laughs> There's still be global warming. That's a myth. Good Lord. Cosine of 30 degrees. Why do I know you? He's from Mars. They're already dead. <laughs> they thought Mars was like, There's no global warming. There's no atmosphere. There's no atmosphere. No. Well, yeah. There's a little there's bit of atmosphere. atmosphere. What's cosine of 30? Cosine of 30. What do I need? That's one of the draw a picture ones. Draw a triangle. Here's 30. How do I label my side? You got that one right. The right. Well, the right length is square root of 3. Where's it? 1. 1. Adjacent. Smallest Adjacent. angle. Adjacent. Smallest side. Square root Across three. from the That's hypotenuse. 2. Is two. two. Square root, square, root three. Three. square root of 30. Square root of 30. So what's cosine of 30? Square root of 3 over 2. So this becomes the square root of 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2 all over 2. It's not very pretty. Mm -hmm. It's a complex fraction under a radical. Oh, ouch. So what can I do to it? Simplify it. 
How do you simplify a complex fraction ignoring the big radical on the outside? You do something to it. Sure. What? How do you simplify a complex fraction? You make it uncomplex. I mean, how do I do that? Stop guessing. You beat it up and take its lunch money. No, oh, we've done this before. Really? Yeah, with the um, trigonomic identities, you had all these fractions and you multiplied by, by two by multiplied by the, the common, common denominator. denominator. What's the common denominator? Two. 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 So if you multiply everybody by two, two times one is two. two. Two times the square root of three over two is just the square root of three. Two times two in the bottom is four. Now. Yeah. The square root of 4 I can take, so I can rewrite this as the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 2. So couldn't you have just kept the 2 to begin with? Huh? Huh? This 2 is outside the radical, this 2 oh, is the two inside the radical. Okay. I wrote it as it was in the Yeah, notice my fraction bar goes all the way over here. I just think my there. fraction bar really long. Yeah, there we go. Now, on um, Friday, I showed that the cosine of 15 was the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. four. These two numbers are identical. Yep. They're equivalent, though they look totally different. If you type them both into your calculators, their decimal values would be exactly the same. And there is a way of manipulating the right-hand side to force it to look like the left-hand side. It's not pretty. I've done it once, and I'll never ever do it again. It took a page and a half of paper, and a lot of mistakes. Ugh. So that's one way you can use a half-angle formula. Of course, we could also, you know, just mess around. I'm, I'm getting a different answer. Oh, uh, you just don't type it in, right? Uh, what if I want um, tangent of a half-angle? How did I find the tangent sum formula? Way back when, before the snow days. That was like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. Well, tangent's equal to what? What's tangent equal to? So I could write this as sine of alpha over 2 over cosine of alpha over 2. When in doubt, change everything into sines and cosines. When in doubt, draw a picture. And when in doubt, draw a picture. So sine of the half angle is the square root of plus or minus one minus cosine of oh, alpha okay. over okay. two. Well, this is one. That's the top one. Give me one second. Okay. It's one minus cosine. I fear that if I stare directly at this question, I'll turn to sine. <laughs> 1 plus cosine of alpha over 2 in the bottom. Okay. Now, since it's a square root over a square root, we can shove the whole it. thing underneath a... <laughs> what? You Why wish they could radical? go both. <laughs> yeah, I want to make one radical out of it. So you can think of it as the square root of all, all of that mess. But then on the inside, how do you divide a fraction by a fraction? <sighs> you multiply by the reciprocal. If I do that, what happens to the twos? They go poof. They go poof. So what you're left with is the square root, plus or minus, of 1 minus cosine of alpha over 1 plus cosine of alpha. And this would be tangent up over 2. It's not a very pretty formula. So I don't like it. We're going to change it. How can I change it? I'll give you a hint. You start seeing 1 minus cosines, 1 plus cosines, 1 minus sines, 1 plus sines. Don't that equal something else? It can if you manipulate it the right way. So the trick I'm going to use, square it. I can't square it, is if I look top and bottom, you see 1 minus cosine, then you're going to multiply them by each other. Close, no scar. The 1 minus cosine of set beta or alpha? That's alpha. Okay, alpha times 1 plus cosine of alpha. I could do that, but if I do it to the top, I have to do the exact same thing to the bottom. To the bottom. You, see, you get a big wave. I know I just told you what to do, but am I right? That? Yeah. What I wrote? 
Yes. I wouldn't write it otherwise. Okay. It's really hard to erase on this silly thing. I mean, I can erase it on the board, but it doesn't erase it on the computer. What are the top two called? Fancy name? The new one. No. One um, minus cosine, cosine, one plus cosine. Conjugates. Or you multiply the two middle terms cancel. Yeah. And all you need is the first and the last. So one times one is? And cosine times cosine is? So this would equal plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared alpha in the top. What's in the bottom? 1 plus 2 cosine. No, don't multiply it out. <laughs> Trust me. 1 plus cosine of alpha all squared. There's a reason I don't want to multiply it out. What don't you like about this expression? Oh, it's a radical. The radical. So, so if I divide perfect squares. squares. What's my one minus cosine squared alpha equal to? I understand what you're saying, yeah. Sine squared. So the top becomes one plus or minus the square root of sine squared alpha over one plus cosine alpha all squared. And now we're wouldn't that equal square root of sine squared? Which is? Just sine. And the bottom? Is 1 plus cosine. Without the radical. Yeah. That's much nicer. I'm smart. And also okay, notice yeah. the plus or minus goes away. Because the sine and the cosine will determine if it's positive or... Well, actually, I think it's just the sine that determines it. The cosine being one plus cosine, the bottom could be equal to zero, but it'll never equal negative. Um, alternately, this could also become one minus cosine of alpha over sine of alpha. So both of these are similar. How do you think I come up with the second expression? You flip it and take it. Well, instead of multiplying by one plus cosine alpha, how about negative? One minus cosine alpha, then the bottom two are conjugates. So it just depends on what you do in the beginning to determine you'll get one of those two answers. Right. But we don't care anymore. I'd rather use this answer, personally. Why? One number in the bottom. Okay. Gotcha. And a nice expression in the top. This one over here is nice, except there's two numbers in the bottom, and people usually type that if they calculate it wrong. So that's tangent of a half angle. It's kind of cool. But isn't it neat how things manipulate? And one of the identities in, um, that we proved in class was that this one was equal to that one from section one. Wait, so the left one is equal to the right one? Well, of course, they came from the same thing, tangent of alpha over two. So therefore, they're equal to each other. And I showed you in uh, section one that how to prove this identity, where you multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, and you come up with the other one. Ah. What's that? Time to go. Getting there. <sighs> now remember, next class, I'm not teaching you anything, I'm just making you work one, 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 one. all class. What'd you so say? I want to get all the teaching out of the way today. When did you say that? The beginning of that. Okay. Oh, they where were you? Here. They weren't here. Okay. We got stopped by a bunch of lights. Well, I was waiting for you. I, we got stopped by a policeman. Oh, no, we got stopped by a bunch of lights. <laughs> they all decided to turn right off. Which way do you come in? There's sense on Sunset of Meadowview. Where are you traveling from? Over there by Walmart. I've been there. Why would you be at Walmart? <laughs> because I live at the Walmart. There? You live at the Walmart? I live by Walmart. <laughs> I could walk to every store I need to go to. Uh, true, if you live over there. Oh, and Mark drives in there. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. I can't see around that corner. I would want to drive head. around there. Alright, verify the identity. Can't just solve it. You can't <laughs> solve it. The answer is all real numbers. <laughs> um, <laughs> why can't we just solve it? I know sure, I solved it for you. It's all real numbers. I know where X is. It's right there. X is all real numbers. There we go. Find X. It's right there. Which side do you want to work with? You. Right. The right. right. Now, if you're going to work with the right. So many pages of paper. 
You have tangents and sines on the right-hand side, but you only have cosine. So one of the things you're going to have to start off with is change everything into you change the tangents to sine, sine of cosine. cosine. So the first step I would do is, this is sine of x over cosine of x plus sine of x over 2 sine of x over cosine of x. If you want to put the 2 next to the sine, that's perfectly fine. It won't hurt anything. I still don't understand why it's not sine and like um, secant and then cosine. Oh, I swear. Don't worry about it. Just memorize it that way. That's the CCDS. I hate that. All right. What should I do next? Simplify. How? Get rid of the big fractions. Get rid of the small fractions. And the big fraction you're never going to get rid of. So you're going to multiply by the reciprocal? No. I guess we could. We could. What's the other method? The one I'd rather you know. Yeah. We talked about it earlier the over there. Multiply what? The common denominator. Multiply everybody by the common denominator. In this case, happens to be? Cosine. Cosine. I mean, in this case, since it's a single fraction at the bottom, yeah, you can multiply by the reciprocal. But I'd rather you do the complex fraction thing so you don't forget about it. So multiply everybody by cosine of x. Every single term. What happens to the first cosine of x? It cancels. It cancels. And you're left with? Just sine. Sine of x plus? Uh, sine of x cosine of x. Sine of x cosine of x. Over? Two sine of x. Two sine of x. Hmm. Does that help us? It can. Yep. Alright. Now do you multiply by the reciprocal? No, that's not going to help me now. <laughs> yeah, first, um, you can um, it turn to one half sine of x, right? I'm not sure. Your the sine of x over two sine of x, wouldn't that be one half sine of x? Is, is that Are you talking about here? Yes. Yes. And? The other sine counts, right? Okay, so to make that cleaner, what would you do? Because you're all <laughs> mishmashing it all together. Uh, what can I do to the top so that they cancel smoothly? Divided by sine. Uh, factor out a sine. Factor out a sine. So this would be sine of x times what's left behind? One plus cosine of x. Cosine of x over two, two sine of x. Okay. Now what happens to the sines? Okay, so now the sines will cancel out right there. And you're left with one plus cosine of x. All over sine. Two. Wait, sine's cancel. Right? I'm so. Well, I thought. It, You're thinking here where they would have to individually cancel. I'd rather you factor it out so you see them. Just no, I was, I was thinking that because it's two sine, there was two of the sines, so there would be one sine left over. So two over four. I was thinking <laughs> like that. Which is two over two times two. Once those twos are gone, they're gone. Just because there's two times it, I was, I was thinking I know you're that thinking. became it made. You're thinking sides. subtraction. Yeah. You're thinking yeah. subtraction. Yeah. You're going. Oh, there's this sine x. There's this sine x. I'm getting rid of one. You're dividing. So two, two, two sine minus sine is one sine. But when you're dividing, sine x over sine x is equal to. Just think that one one times two is two to the bottom. All right. Am I done? No. No. Of course. So how does it relate 1 plus cosine of x over 2 and cosine squared x over 2? Is there an identity? Yes. Yeah. What's the half angle identity? It says cosine of half the angle is equal to square root. the square root of 1 plus cosine of x over 2. Well, theta in this case over 2. So what's the only difference between these two? There's the square root. The square, root missing. the square root's missing. So if I got rid of the square root, where would it go? On the other side. On the other side. So cosine squared equals. Why did you switch it to theta? I just this is the identity. This is the identity. I'm just trying to get you to recognize that when I square this, the square so root goes away. So we don't have to do anything else to that part. That part is equal to the top part. Yep. And therefore, you are. Because it's missing the radical, the other side is squared. Okay, 
so if it ended up getting the square root, it would not be equal to it. You'd have to still manipulate it, right? Yeah, if there was something still in the way, you'd have to do something to it. But there's not much you can do to 1 plus cosine. Uh, cosine of theta is equal to negative 2 thirds. Um, theta is on the interval from pi to 3 pi over 2. I'm using x. Wait, what is that symbol? On the interval, element of? Whoa. So it's like a curvy E? Yeah, it's a curvy E. Okay, so or draw a C and put a line down the middle. Or it just means theta is minus. on the interval from pi to 3 pi over 2. So where is it? So you could have just put it's pi in the third quadrant. Q3. <coughs> is all that junk is saying. It's in quadrant 3. You could have put pi. Less than or equal to less theta, less than or equal to 3 pi over 2. Yeah, sure. I, I was thinking. I'm trying to get used to notations, different notations. But either way, it well, lands you in quadrant 3. Are we drawing a picture now? Eventually. I want to find sine of theta over 2. So now we're solving. Now, if you take half of an angle that's in quadrant 3, where would it land? Same thing. Mm -hmm. If you take half of an angle that is in quadrant 3, where would it land? Well, it depends on where the angle is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if you're like 270, what's half of 270? What's the maximum it could be? 135. 135 is in what quadrant? 2. 2. So this is either going to be plus or minus, so which one is it going to be? Minus. Plus. All students. All students. And this is? So it's in the second side. So remember, this is going to be the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta all over 2. And it's going to be plus because the angle, the maximum of the angle, is going to put it in the second quadrant. So you don't have to put plus or minus because it is sine. It's going to automatically be plus. And it's, we already determined that the angle is in the third quadrant. Half of the third quadrant angle, the biggest one possible, lands you in the second quadrant. So whether it's in the first or the second quadrant, it's still positive. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So now we can draw a picture. Where would I draw it? In the second quadrant. Dang it. You just said it was in the second. The half angle is in the second quadrant. Theta is in the third. third. So you have to draw your triangle in the third quadrant. <laughs> so this is your theta reference. Not half your angle, this is your main angle. How do I label my sides? Adjacent. Adjacent is? Eugene. Over hypotenuse is? And the third side is? It's going to be a negative number. Yes. Square root of 5. Square root of 5. So this would be negative square root of 5. Isn't that five. an imaginary number? Mm. Square root of negative 5 is an imaginary oh, number. Oh, negative square root of 5 is yeah, just a negative. Yeah, square root of a negative is imaginary. Negative square root is not. Yeah, it's just a number. All right, so plug it into our little square root here. 1 minus, what's cosine of this angle equal to? Oh, dang it. I gave it to you. I should have said sign. It's negative two thirds. We didn't even need the picture. Darn it. Yes. Over two. Oh well. It's good to have it. God is good. Don't leave it like that. What should you do? Distribute. There's a well, foil. There's nothing to foil. Put the make it positive because it's a negative time. Sure, sure. We can make that positive, but what's wrong with that thing? Sure. One plus two thirds over two. It's going to give you what is it? Times, Times everything by two. two. Complex fraction. Multiply him by two. Multiply him by two. Multiply him by two. So this is going to equal the square root of two plus John. <laughs> what? Two plus plus one third. Negative. Oh no! I don't want to multiply by two then. I have that fraction still. Aha. Multiply by three. Okay. Three. So three multiply plus. everybody by three. I didn't mind writing the three. Three, plus three minus two. So now it's three. It's still plus. Plus. Because it's a negative two. Um, is it subtract? A negative number. Negative chance of negative is a positive. Uh, okay. Uh, so you get three plus two over six, which is going to be five over six. Square root five over six. Which is technically illegal, but I'll let it go for. What? Why? How's it illegal? You can't have uh, the radical of a fraction. 
Well, can you just can, couldn't it be square root of five over no, wait, six and a half square root? Square root of five over square root of six. Yeah, and when you multiply it, it's still the same. Never mind. No, 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 keep going. We're gonna get multiply top by square root of six. Multiply top and bottom by square root of six. You're gonna get six at the bottom. So you get square root of thirty over six. That's the true answer. Proper, proper answer, I should say. Proper answer. We're gonna get caught on that, please. <sighs> I shouldn't have gave you the cosine. Oh well, time to go. Huh?